We met Mr. Do in Hoi An. He's a Vietnamese war veteran who lost his leg to a landmine at age 22. His friend died as a result of that same landmine. When we visited him, he sang a song to us in Vietnamese while he played the guitar. Our guide, Emily, gave us the gist of it. It was a tribute to his friend that died and the hopelessness that he felt after the war that he wouldn't have a meaningful life. But here we are in his home. He's got a wife and three grown children now. And this is the floor where his youngest child would play while he built a thriving business selling delicious rice wine. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Beautiful. He ended up giving me his guitar to play, which was the first time I've held a guitar since we started full-time travel. This is the type of experience we want more of. Welcome back to Finding Jean Marie. We share our lives with full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We had an aha moment in Chiang Mai. We'll talk about that later in this video. Our amazing interaction with Mr. Doe wasn't the trigger for our epiphany, but it was one of the results from it. This all brings up some questions and challenges that we wanted to explore with you. We're curious to know if you've had any similar kinds of evolutions into the way you've traveled. Let's talk a little bit about what international travel looked like to us before we became full-time travelers and actually as we were vacationing most of the time. We'd plan our trips out, we'd have like a week or two of travel that we were allowed to have, vacation time, and we'd go to TripAdvisor, pick out the hot spots, try to fit as many things as we could into our week or two wherever we were staying, and hit all the highlights. Yeah, it was really the top things to do in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> we had a checklist of the things that we wanted. These are the places to eat. These are the places that we should experience. And we felt very satisfied after a trip that we'd hit all of the major places. And of course, the reason we did this is because everyone wants to know, what's the Eiffel Tower like? What's the Colosseum like in Rome? What are these things like in all the places you're going to? They want to hear about the cool things that they've seen and heard about, and they want you to share their experiences. So that's what we were doing. And sometimes it wasn't even people who hadn't been to those places. Oftentimes it was people who would travel to the same locations and we would bond over shared experiences. Exactly. Yeah. After 16 months of full-time travel, we've gotten into some habits and we've noticed some patterns emerging in our travel experiences. And if you've been here for any length of time, I'm sure you've noticed the same thing. You can expect us to go on a history tour or a walking tour and probably spread out a little bit and do a biking tour. We will sometimes look for a tour that will give us some hidden gems. I mean, the goal is to experience a place from people that know about it. Because when we're walking into a lot of these cities, we have no idea except a few words we've read on a page. We don't know what's the best thing to do. We certainly don't know any hidden secrets. And so we're trying to find out what should we actually be looking at when we go to Siem Reap, when we go to Chiang Mai, when we go to any place. And we do like doing those things. I think it's important for us to always know about the history of a place because that helps us to make a deeper connection to the places that we've been and understand the people and the culture a little bit more. Now, even when we go to a museum, we're still looking for someone to tell us what are the important parts of a museum because it could be a huge one that has days worth of stuff to look at. We don't usually have that much time when we walk into a museum. We need like the two to four hour tour get the most we can out of it. And admittedly, a lot of times when we're looking for places to eat, we go to the internet and we see what the highest rated places are and we go to them. Especially when it comes to places like coffee shops, which are essential for our visits to any place. We'll go on Google or we'll go on TripAdvisor, we'll go on whatever the local best informed source is for finding out what places do people like to go to here. Which brings the question up, what's the problem with this type of travel? And really on his face, nothing. But 
I was noticing that I was getting tired of our own predictability and having the same experiences or doing the same things country after country or place after place that we would visit. Every place is unique, even if we're going to do the same type of things. But we're not doing something that's ridiculously unusual in a place. Like in Hanoi, we sat down at a table to have some food and the person sitting next to us, his name was Sean, he was traveling Vietnam very differently. He was on a motorbike and he was meeting up with people he had met or friends and they were inviting him into homes and he was sitting down and breaking bread with them and he was enjoying these experiences with locals that was way beyond the stuff that we were doing. And not that this was such a groundbreaking idea. Of course we know yeah. that there are people who do this kind of thing. But he was sitting right next to us <laughs> and saying this is what he's going to do tomorrow and the next day and next week he's going to do this stuff, which is first-hand knowledge as opposed to third party. I think Southeast Asia had the most impact on us simply because it's an inexpensive place for people to travel to and people tend to slow travel there quite a bit. And we know that there's a lot of people who have really local experiences and we've been kind of uncomfortable with just kind of jumping into that. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but it definitely kind of created a chasm between the way we'd been traveling and seeing very touristy things and really living as a local. But well, we want to hear from you. What kind of travel experiences do you plan to have? Or do you plan it all in your travel? And that's not to say that we haven't had local experiences while we travel. You know, when we were in Egypt, our guide, Mahmoud, who was helping us on the Nile River cruise, he was talking about how his family lived. And as he, we were shown places on the west side of the Nile, he was saying his family's from here and they got moved out of there. And he was talking about how his wife and he met and how they were on the same kind of cruise ship. And he was talking about his children and, and his hopes for his family and how he wanted to grow in his career and move forward. These are personal items, personal things that we shared because we spent a few minutes just sitting and chatting with him, not just going on the walks and the tours. Right, and we still are in touch with him on a regular basis, which is pretty special. We took the three coolest neighborhoods in Saigon tour, and the owner of that small company was somebody who reached out to us when he heard we were interested in going to Hoi An. He and his wife were founders of this small little company, and they lived in Da Nang. He wanted to come and give us a broad view of Hoi An so that we could have maybe a different experience than we had in Saigon. He shared about how his wife is now expecting and we went on two tours with him while we were in Hoi An and really built a, a nice strong bond and communicated quite a bit over the last several months. One of the personal moments he shared with us was how he has to structure his earnings so that he can make enough when tourist season isn't high. So he's also a video editor. And he has a family and a growing family, which means he has to make sure there's income coming in all the time. And he also included us in some of his creative process. He wanted to know if these tours were helping people. He wanted to know what he could do more in these tours. So we felt like we were really connected with his life and helping him as much as he was helping us. And we can't forget about Antonio, who we met in Genoa. And he shared the story that he was an immigrant coming in. Maybe he was six years old at the time and how difficult it was because he didn't know how to speak Italian and just the process of getting acclimated to a foreign country and how warmly he was treated by the people there and what a melting pot Genoa is. So we got some insights that we never would have had. The deeper conversations we have are usually with people we spend more time with. So sometimes it's tour guides, sometimes it's the coffee shop owners. We had an experience in Body Ferry where we learned a lot about the shop owner and her life and her family. And it was really touching that she shared so much with us. So what was this huge aha moment that we had in Chiang Mai? When we travel to new places, we try not to compare it to other places we've been because we want to appreciate each spot, each city for what it offers to us. But when we got to Chiang Mai, we felt something wasn't right. It didn't feel the same as when we were in Siem Reap. We were in Thailand for just a few days when we knew something was off and it was confusing to us because Thailand was one of the places we knew we wanted to get to. It was at the top of our list when we were planning our Southeast Asia itinerary. And Cambodia was a place that we were almost willing to take off the list. So what resonated for us so much in Cambodia that we were missing in Thailand. Yeah, we tried to go down the list of, was it the food, was it the climate, was it the Airbnb? What, what was changed here that 
immediately felt off. And it actually took us a few days because we were like really racking our brains to figure out what the problem was. And then we had this light bulb revelation. We had made such a great connection with our host and co-host and we really felt seen and we felt like we saw them and it created this bond and that bond just happened over and over again. And when we were sitting down at dinner in Chiang Mai, we felt like we could just lift right out and it wouldn't even matter. We felt invisible. Yeah, the hosts in Siem Reap were there with us all the time. The host in Chiang Mai was not there on site, was communicating once in a while, but there really wasn't anything that we could say, we know this person. Right, it was very transactional. Do you need water? Do you need this? Yeah. Do you need that? As opposed to Virik, who had a huge smile on his face every single day, and we saw him multiple times, and it just created a connection. So one of the challenges that we face as full-time travelers is that our relationships with our family and friends are different. And although we try to stay in touch as much as we can, our lives are different and their lives have moved on. And we try to be around for the really important things. We can't always, but we also know that it's not the big things that matter. It's the day-to-day minutia that really connects us with other people in our lives. And you know, when you hear about the big stuff, it's all the little things that happened all along the way. Like, oh, I didn't know that you started to go to yoga or I don't know, like just the little things. Those are the those are the connecting pieces, not the wedding that you show up for. And when we're full-time travelers, we don't get to have those kinds of experiences. Now, even if we do make phone calls or the occasional FaceTime call, we don't hear about any kind of day-to-day -day stuff because they're trying to cram in the big stuff because we may not have talked to them in two, three weeks because of timing, schedules, just everything that's going on. And I think that's when we realized that the people who we're with on a regular basis, the people that we're traveling among and getting to know them really is an important part of our travels these days. We're not not interested in our family and friends. Like, honestly, they're so important to us. But we want to bring you the people who are changing our hearts and lives on a daily basis as well. And so when we come across Mr. Doe, we want to share it with you. And we want to meet more people like him in the course of our travels. Yeah, that's what enriches your life, right? When you're talking about family and friends, you remember all those special times you spent together over a meal, over a drink, just having a conversation. When you can't do that with them, who's around? And the more we get involved with locals, the more we get involved with the people that we're spending time with in the city we're in, makes all the difference. And I think that's what, that's what we looked at and said, this is what we need. This is where the heart of our travels really is. But having these experiences with locals isn't always as easy. I mean, maybe it is for some people, but we have our problems with it. For sure. We're introverts at heart, both of us. And so stepping outside our comfort zone is really uncomfortable. I especially am someone who really likes to know what the rules of engagement are. So I wanna know if somebody invites me into their home, is it because they wanna sell something to me? Is it that like maybe afterwards, should I be giving them a tip? Um, I mean, I am appreciative that they're wanting to share their experiences. I don't understand or know what the local culture is. And who do you ask about those things when you're in a strange place and you don't really know anyone? Yeah, when one of our tour guides invited us to his family's home to show us around and show us his family. It's like, okay, uh, how, how deep into this are we going to be? I mean, I, I love people. I'm, I'm a people person, but I'm also always worried about, am I getting involved too much there in their way. I'm in their way. Am I, am I bothering them? Are we doing anything that's wrong culturally? <laughs> you know, we worry about these kind of little things and maybe that's insane to do, but that's us, right? So over the last few months, we've started to take local tours, uh, countryside tours, seeing how locals live, uh, engaging with some of the artisans and trying to have more local experiences. We took a cooking class for the first time in Vietnam, and that was interesting because 
as important as food is to any culture, it's interesting to see how they're cooking and what local ingredients they're using and how do they source them. But those things aren't always in every place that we visit. So how do we find those local experiences when they're not like just jumping out at us? Maybe you can help us. How do you find those experiences? Are you able to seek out the local things? Let us know in the comments. A lot of people choose to stay in hostels as a great way to meet fellow travelers. Or even we rent Airbnbs and we rent the entire property. But a lot of people just rent a room in someone's home. That is really outside of our comfort zones. Uh, again, how do we act and how are we invading someone's space? It's all, and we're introverts, so <laughs> the idea of spending an entire month feeling like we're impositioning people or just feeling like we can't, we have to be on our best behavior maybe, <laughs> is hard. Like, for as much as we love each other, you know, 24-7 is a lot. And so then putting strangers on top of it is really uncomfortable for us. We just don't know, but we're trying to figure it out. I'm always uncomfortable, worry about making mistakes in front of people. And maybe the reverse is true too. Maybe they don't want to let us into their lives anymore. Maybe they don't want to talk about anything personal and that's okay. I mean, we certainly aren't trying to impose anything on them, but maybe that's another guard that goes up when we're trying to get more connections. I mean, it's a big ask to say that these locals are going to open up their hearts and their lives to us strangers who are going to pass through perhaps never to be met again. And that's not necessarily something that they want to do. So given that we have a limited amount of time in any place that we're staying, we struggle with how do we balance out the popular touristy sites that we all want to see with the local experiences that really warm our hearts. One of the most obvious things is that something has to give. We had an experience in Chiang Mai where we had the opportunity to go out to dinner with somebody and we chose to do that instead of one of the final tours that we wanted to get in before we left town. So that's okay. It was more important for us to have a meaningful connection with a fellow human being than to see a site that we can come back to and see at any other point in our lives. Exactly. I think that's a key point. The sites are usually going to be there in the future. Not all of them, but most of them are going to be there. But the people that you run into in that moment in time, if we don't say yes to that, we're wasting a glorious opportunity to really make a connection. And we need to make peace with the fact that some places are just going to be more touristy. And that's okay too. Yeah. We don't have to have deep rich experiences every place we travel to. And sometimes it's just not even possible. In fact, we're going to be traveling for uh, two weeks with our daughter and it's probably unlikely that we're going to have like the deep experiences that we look for when we have an entire month somewhere. That's true, especially when it's in Italy and we have to hit a lot of cities with her. It's going to be a fast paced adventure. And for the places that we travel to where either tours are super expensive or we can't find the kind of local tours that we're interested in kind of deep diving into, we just have to accept that we're going to have to work a little bit harder. We may have fewer of those local experiences that we're after. Let's talk about some of the things we learned from all these experiences. One of them is you can't always find the local places through Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, all those standard services you think that's what I use in Italy or London or Paris. Well, sorry, the locals don't use those services to rate their favorite restaurants. And once in a while you do get lucky and you find a local place that's in there, but we have to look a little harder and ask more questions of locals to find those places. So that's an important tip. But at the same time, we just arrived in Taiwan yesterday and Kevin somehow found this great beef noodle of the king place yeah. that was off of a side alley and super authentic local place with delicious food. And we found it on Google. Yeah. <laughs> so but, it's not impossible, but it's maybe not. But this is something, this is some place that if we saw that alley maybe six months ago or eight months ago, we might not have walked down it. I think this is part of our growth though in, in travel. It's like, this is a local experience. Let's just do it. It sounded like locals go here. Sometimes it even feels like I don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do, we, we do. do. They, they were very nice and we had a great time and great food. 
If you watched our episode from maybe about six months ago when we were in Italy, we had talked about the challenges of slow travel versus no travel. We'll link to that episode below. But Kevin kind of had some frustration about some of the fast travel we're doing. Well, we've managed to have about five months of straight, slow, steady travel, and it's been amazing. And we've got another couple of months before some fast travel kicks in. And we don't have control over some of that. We're going to be back in the US, and that always requires a bunch of fast travel, and it's okay. But what do we feel the slow travel has given to us? For one thing, it gives us the time to find the local things. If you're in a place for a week, and we've been in that time in Italy, it was really hard to figure out where to go to in this short period of time. If we're producing YouTube videos weekly, then we have less time to go exploring. But if we're there for a whole month, we can set aside a few days every week and say, we're gonna do some stuff locally. We're gonna go ask our Airbnb hosts. We're gonna go ask some people we've met about where we should go to do things. And that becomes calmer, slower, and more Enriching. Real, enriching, yeah, exactly. And of course, everybody's idea of slow travel is different. For us, we've been spending a month to five weeks someplace, and that's been a sweet spot for us. It's not so long that we feel like we can't pivot or that we're stuck somewhere that just isn't resonating with us, but it's long enough to really have some meaningful experiences while also having just some downtime. Uh, we've got no place to recover from <laughs> like you would if you were just going on vacation. And so just having do nothing days still is part of our lives out of necessity. When we started this channel and we talked about making connections, it wasn't just a phrase we threw into our intro. It was something we really believed in. We said, if we're going to do this, if we're going to travel all the time, it's not about vacationing. It's not about trying to hit every country in the world. It's about taking the time to make those real connections. And the things that we remember most are those connections. So when we created our tagline and making connections along the way, I don't think we even understood how meaningful that was going to be to us. There's an awful lot of places in the world that we haven't seen and we really want to see those. Some of those have very big tour sites in them and we're going to see those too because we do want to see all those things. But we also want to make sure that we're having real experiences in wherever we go. And we hope you enjoy that too. So this epiphany came to us after 16 months of full-time travel and uh, several years of traveling internationally. You may have come up with this idea way before <laughs> us in your travel lifespan. What do you think about this? Do you have ideas or thoughts or what was your epiphany moment? We hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you'll subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, one of the best things that you can do for us is to recommend our videos to your friends and family. And check out FindingGeniumRe.com where we have articles, tips, and our community forum. Until next time. Until next time.